Okay. Uh, at home prices, uh, prices are up in a month of October, but it falls in a month of November. So I'm going to read you both of these stories. First one is by CNBC. The SMB CoreLogic Case Shiller 20 City Home in- Price Index out Tuesday climbed. 18.4% in October from a year earlier. The gain marked a slight declaration from 19.1% year-over-year increase in September, but was about uh, uh, in line with what the economists have been expecting. All 20 cities posted double-digit annual gains. The hottest market was Phoenix, up 32.3%. Wow, Tampa, 28.1%. Miami, 25.7%. Minneapolis and Chicago, smallest increases. Chicago and Minneapolis, smallest increases. Anybody surprised? Bing, bang. 11.5%. Percent last week, mortgage rates fell to uh, 3.05 for the benchmark of 30 years, and fixed rates are 2.66 for 15-year fixed rate home loans. Then a Yahoo story comes out about November. National home prices fell in November as sales remain brisk. Although home prices across the nation remain brisk, November brought some relief for buyers as median sale prices fell 2.9 percent to 3.30, the largest monthly decline since the beginning of pandemic. Since the beginning of the pandemic, it dropped 3 percent. Meanwhile, the number of available homes remains low. The number of homes for sale fell to a new loan 14-year history of report, declining 17.7%. One product of the smaller home inventory is that houses aren't staying on the market for too long. The average home sold in November was on the market for 29 days. That was only the sixth time in history of the report that the average time on the market dipped below 30 days. Tom, I'm going to come to you with this here first. If I'm thinking about, if I'm thinking about buying or selling, how should I think if I'm a buyer? How should I think if I'm a seller? What are your thoughts? Well, hear me now and hear me clearly. You need to get into a house as soon as you can in sensible negotiation, of course, because we are heading to be renter nation. Translate these three facts. Number of available homes remains low. Stuff that's on the market is on the market less than 30 days. What that means is anything that comes out there is selling, getting bought up. Investors are buying this up. Corporate investors are buying it up. PE investors are buying it up because there is a ton of capital out there. Uh, Pat, you seem to have mentioned on a few podcasts that we've printed a lot of money in the last year. Yep. That capital is being lands you know, upstream, not downstream with people, it lands upstream at the end of the day. And we're about to become renter nation because what you see here is big money is buying up these homes and you're going to be renting. So if you- I don't understand what that means, Tom. So I'm confused here. So you said go buy because big money's buying up properties and you're going to be a renter? Uh, Unpack that for me. Yeah. So if you can't get into a house soon, Within your means, within your means, you are probably going to be in a position where you're renting because these houses are being bought up. There's a lot of corporate buyers out there. There's a lot of PE buyers. I got you. So corporate They're, buyers are buying regular residential homes, yeah. not even condos, not even townhouses, just homes. Single family. Matter of fact, I read an article this past week where there was a, a PE investor said, I think we're in the early innings. Um, actually, and it was, it was A-Rod's partner. A-Rod, who said, I think we're in the early innings of the single-family home investment market, where you buy large consolidations of homes, run them through property management, and America becomes renters of single-family homes. Not talking condos, not talking apartments. That's where this is going. You're I, saying this only applies to single-family homes? No. This opinion. No, no, you no. Think no. What I'm saying is saying there has always been large investors that bought large numbers of MDUs, multi, multi-dwelling multi units, MFUs, multifamily units. Now it's coming to they're buying out neighborhoods of single-family yeah. homes. Mm. So I, I tell you, I've seen this firsthand, and I can't tell you how right he is, and this is the conversation that we've had. Mm-hmm. The rent is too damn high, guy, up in New York. Yeah. This is what happened. Corporate corporations came in. In and, New York, you're saying. Yeah. In the city. Yeah, Bazudo, number one of them, all right? They come in and they buy entire blocks. And then what they do is, is they insulate themselves from any sort of market prices. So a year ago, when everybody said, New York's dead, it's leaving, everybody's leaving, prices never went down on rent. Because these guys can take as many losses as they can. They're selling off shares. They're getting it on both sides. They're selling off shares on what they own. Based on the price points of what the rent is. Exactly. So they sell the shares off and they're making money. Then they take losses off of the off of uh off of what they earn if the the assets underperform. So the, they insulate themselves from any sort of market function. You look at yourself and you say, how in the hell is this still $2,300 for a one-bedroom up in Jersey City? Well, because everything's $2,300. They set the market price. Hmm. And now they're going even as far as Zillow. 
they have this. Uh, they got sued for a lot of money. I think it's still in court. They were art. They they were artificially raising the prices based on the corporate entities that own the prices. So you own a house, right? You can't sit on the house for two years. You're a normal human being. You're like, all right, I got to get a good offer and I got to go live somewhere. But if you're a corporation, you can sit on that house for 10 years. You hold the asset, you use it as as uh, leverage to get other assets, yeah. mm-hmm. and, you, and, and, and you just artificially inflate the price in the market. So what really happens here, man, we want to talk about like income inequality. This is Where's AOC when it comes to this shit? Where's the Democrats when it comes to this? Who has access to credit? Credit score is the number one income inequality in the world. It's not education. It's not money. It's not salary. It's access to finance. Who has access to the money that you need to get this mortgage? Correct. And the leverage that you talked about, these these investors, they're not paying 3.05%. They're paying less. So the interest cost that they have to recoup there when they're renting it to people is low. It's Tom, all time I, Tom, low. They're, they're taking the money from themselves. Correct. They're loaning the money out to themselves. Yeah. Here's a question for you. Next year's midterms. Okay. During midterms. Do rates go up? Do rates go down? Do you flatline the rates? Do you manage? Because the, the formula with inflation is what? If inflation is what, high, how do you control it? You raise you the interest the rate, rates, right? move down the, the money down. supply. Okay. Right. So inflation at 6.8. Do you think we're going to crack 7% when the next report comes yes. up? Yes. Okay. So let's just say we crack 7%. A lot of okay. us think we're already there. All right. Some people are saying we're at 10 or 11%. But let's just say the numbers come out publicly. We crack 7. If we crack 7, how quickly do you think the call is made to Powell? To raise rates to control inflation. Well, didn't Powell already announce that he's going to raise rates? Seven times is what Goldman Sachs think, is saying it's going to be raised next year. I think year. the call was made 30 seconds before they make the announcement on the inflation. Okay, so fine. If that happens, all I want to know, I'm the buyer, I'm the seller. Rates going up, rates going down, 2022. Am I a buyer? Am I a seller? What, what am I in 2022? Knowing the fact that to control inflation, i got to increase the rates. I you got to be a buyer right now. you got to be a buyer if you can be. If you've got the savings and you can get in, you need to be a buyer. Because I don't think the, these asset – we may have a bubble where it pops down like 08, 09. Yeah. But we're back above that and then some and then some, yeah. right? So I think you got to be a buyer within your ways and means. See, right? I, but you got to be – if, if otherwise, because th- there's an appreciable asset under that that the government is going to – I mean – Look at Fannie Mae here, 3%, 2.66%. That's very low cost. I agree that you need to be a buyer, but where I disagree is that you have to be within your means. I think that right now, if they're giving out free money like candy and everybody is using that free money, you get yours too. Right now, if they give you, if anybody, I know, and this goes against everything that I was brought up believing, this goes against everything that I, I was raised, this goes against all the Austrian economics that I believe in. But if you have access to credit right now, take it. Take every single dollar somebody will give you. The free money train, the gravy train has to come to an end at some point. And even though more I agree with you, as long as you can service it. You have to be yeah, even at a low interest correct. rate, you have to be able but to service it. Every single dollar they want to give you, you take because I guarantee you they are taking it. I gar- out of that stimulus, we just did what? Three trillion dollars? Three trillion. What did you get? You what did you get, America? Twelve hundred bucks? You're gonna pay for every single dime yeah, of, that, of that twelve hundred bucks. You're twice. gonna you're gonna pay for every single dime of that, of that stimulus. What did you get? Twelve hundred dollars. You got to get yours at this point, man. Well, listen, guys, they're getting where, where I think you guys are both missing the boat here is you guys are making blanket statements. I think it's where you're at in life. If you're going to be in the same city for the next decade and you've got kids and you're in a lockdown and you know where you're going to be and you'll be stability, sure, buy. But if you're like most of America right now and you're working from anywhere and you're working remote, and you're moving, you're grooving, your next thing you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're living in New Jersey. Now you're in Dallas. Now you're back in New York. Now you're back in, in South Florida. You don't know where you're going to be. The last thing you freaking need is to lock yourself in the mortgage because there's something called house rich, cash poor. Mm-hmm. Because it's actually, it's, this is a fact out there that 100% of foreclosures happen when you have a mortgage. So there's a lot of people out there that... Buy a house because they're fed. Buy a house. American dream. You got to buy a house. And they get in the house. They're like, holy shit. I didn't realize that I need furniture for this house. And I didn't realize that I got to pay maintenance. And I got to pay taxes. And I get insurance. And I can't afford this fucking house. Yeah, but Pat wrote an amazing article. What? What do you need to write that article? Now, in the Denver now you're Post? back in 2008 where you, no, yeah, I'm making, people I'm make, were enabled above their means. I, yeah. Exactly. And that's what happens in 2008. And tell us about that article you wrote. Denver Post. 2012 yeah. years ago. It was a... Uh, uh, I think ended up being a cover story. There you go. Home buying, go go with cold, uh, clear logic. 
and I was renting at the time. Yeah. And I had a half a million dollars in a bank, and I was still renting at the time. Wait, right. wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> Scroll back up. We're not going to go right past those bell bottoms, are yeah, we? Yeah, that's a bell bottom. Oh, I'm a bell bottom guy. What's right? going so, on here? So, yeah. Bell bottom guy. Yeah. Pat, so. Full disclosure, I'm in a very similar situation. Were you married at that point yet or no? Uh, Not yet. Yes, okay. I was married. We had Tico already. Okay, got gotcha. you. Well, I'm in a similar situation where I've got a lot of cash in the bank, and yeah. I'm renting, and yeah. where have I lived in the last 24 yeah, but, but, months? But, but, but Adam, you're, you're, a, you're an anomaly. Okay, mm -hmm. because you choose to live this minimalist life at the age of 40. That's not mm -hmm. a very, very common. So you're not everybody. You're probably one in a thousand of mm -hmm. a person at your age that's choosing to live like you. You're living below your means. You're a saver. You're very. You're not a Gucci guy. You're mm -hmm. not a Ferragamo guy. You're not a. You're not any of those guys. Mm -hmm. You don't. I don't see what a Rolex. You're, you're very much of a. Yeah. You're exactly that. The uh, the rich man. Like, what's the what the rich next dad, door? Poor dad. Oh, no, no, the, the millionaire next door. Millionaire, millionaire next door. That's who you are. I'm a you're millionaire, millionaire next door. I read that book. It changed my That's life. I love exactly it. Exactly who you are. Yeah. So your philosophy works for a hundred percent of people. If they apply it, it's going to work for them. Yeah. Uh, my question is more or less of somebody right now that's sitting there saying who has the means, mm -hmm. who has got money in the bank. They got two, three hundred thousand dollars, but they got a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand to put on a down payment and they can still afford to go out there and live in that place. Should they still wait a year or should they go pull, you know, make the decision to buy a house in 2022? That's mm -hmm. what I'm asking. I think what he's saying, the way I see it from his perspective is the following. The people that bought all of these properties, it's mm -hmm. like a comp. Here's what I mean by comp. Uh, uh, say, for example, uh, I, 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 hypothetically, uh, a, I don't know, let's pick an example of an insurance company. Say AIG is about to buy 40% of his company for $200 million, okay? And his company that is buying for $200 million, AIG is putting their own money to buy that 20, uh, 40%. You get to go on at $2 million. Okay, out of the two hundred million dollars, which is what one percent of two hundred million, right? AIG is optimistic they can turn this thing to five billion dollar company within the next three years. Do you think AIG is going to let you lose your money? So you're you're banking on there's no way they're going to lose their hundred ninety eight million dollars. My two million is going to make money. Mm -hmm. So these private equity guys are not going to let themselves lose money. So you have to bank on the fact that they're not doing this, assuming they're going to lose money. They kind of know what they're doing long term. So you hedge. You That's kinda, a good point. You're almost going with them. That's what he's trying to say. So, and I think the rent's going to flip, right? I think because remember, rent rent has to contain yeah. has to contain marginal value, interest, maintenance, mm -hmm. and the property taxes. It will. And so I think the rents are going to be above ownership costs. Of are, you, are you familiar with something called the the price to rent ratio? Yeah, exactly right. But it, you, that when you have the discount, when the money is so cheap. The offset there for yeah. the tax deduction yeah. on the interest totally, is low. Totally, totally understand. Ah. So, hmm. so buying a house today is cheaper than renting the same exact of course. house. No, it depends yeah. on what city you're in. Well, n pull up this something called price to rent ratio. But Adam, I think that this is this is the part that that you're right. But I, I think is escaping you is the landlords when, are shifting. Well, that's the thing. Once they own all the property, once you have no option of ownership, mm -hmm. they can make the rent whatever they want. What 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 are you going to do? They can turn around tomorrow yeah. and they could be like, "All right, rent's four grand for this one bedroom." It's a form and of a monopoly. What, yeah. What what can you do? They yeah. own. Their, they, it's it's market control. Mm. So unless you scroll have, down, Tyler. Which, by the way, if you own one of those properties, you can do as well. Keep going. You know, one of the one of the best quotes in the in the Sopranos, guys. The, the best quote in the Sopranos was, "You know, I don't want any of that California bullshit." And the second best quote <laughs> is, "Keep going. I'll tell you one. Buy land, AJ, because God ain't making any more of it." Huh. All right. Yeah. By, by, the, by the way, you don't need to even look at it. Yeah. I'll just tell you with case studies with families that we're looking at. OK, mm. I got a lot of guys right now that are looking at buying homes and it ranges from half a million dollar homes. It ranges all the way up to 10 million dollar homes. The guys are trying to buy right around me. Every single one of them, they come back and they call me rent is 50 percent higher than me buying the place. Rent of the same house mm. is 50 percent higher than buying the place. It's moving. Guess what the biggest challenge is with most people having a down payment. Right. So if you're buying a, come here, Dilly. If, you, if you're buying a million dollar home, do you have that 20% to put down $200,000? So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.